Okay, uh, here's where we left off last time. Um, we drew a right triangle like this, and you had to measure the adjacent legs of each triangle. You had to measure, which we called X, for triangle A, B, and C. Then you had to draw the Y leg, or the opposite leg, which we called Y, for triangle A, B, and C. A was a small, B was the medium, and C was the large triangle. And then you had to measure the hypotenuse, which we called R, for A, B, and C. Now, here are my results for making those measurements. And yours will be different, obviously. Your triangle will be, will be different. Then um, I calculated the ratios of x divided by r, that is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, and the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And one thing you'll notice is that even though these lengths are very different, the x lengths are very different, the y lengths are very different, the r lengths are very different, x over r is pretty much the same. Now they're not going to be exactly the same because I am not a perfect measurer of lengths. Okay, and so this may not be, you know, these are not perfect right triangles and I didn't measure them perfectly. If I had, then these values would be identical. All, you know, x over r would be the same. But look, 0.835, 0 0.859, 0 0.846 for all three triangles, pretty much the same. So I'm just going to call this 0.85. I'm going to look at these and say, well, they're all about 0.85. Let's round it off to two significant figures. I think that's reasonable. And then here, y over r, 0 0.528, 0 0.533, 0 0.53. That's about 0.53, I think. And then y over x, 0 0.633, 0 0.621, 0 0.626. Uh, that looks like it's rounding off to about 0.63. So the ratios of the legs of these different size triangles are the same. And so we have named those ratios. We have uh, a name for x over r, and you probably already know it from your math classes. Notice that this angle here is the same. And actually, all the angles are the same. The, these triangles are similar triangles. That is, they have different sizes, but their angles are all the same. And so for this triangle, when you go the, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, we call that the cosine of the angle theta. So I'm going to put that cosine theta, by definition, is the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. And so in other words, look, um, if you give me the angle, I can give you the uh, ratio of x over r. Now, I can also calculate the angle by going inverse cosine of the ratio x over r. Now let's do that for this, um, for this. Here's x over r, that is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. They all have the same corner right here, the same angle. So I'm going to figure out what that angle is. If I turn my calculator on. Okay, so that's going to be the inverse cosine of 0.85. And it gives me an angle of 31.7. And I'll round that off to 32 degrees. So this, according to this ratio, x over r, my calculator has a little algorithm in it where if you tell me the ratio, I'll give you the angle. You get, you know, I give you the, I, I, I calculated the ratio of the adjacent over the hypotenuse. I use inverse cosine. I get the angle, 32 degrees, which I think you can see. No, you can't really see it there. Now, um, if you have the opposite over the hypotenuse, if, if this is your angle and opposite over hypotenuse, we have a name for that ratio, which I'm sure you know is sine theta. 
by definition is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we can figure out the angle from that by using whoops, the inverse sine function on your calculator. Okay, and uh, I can check that right now. Uh, look at my uh, y over r is 0.53. So if I take my calculator and I go inverse sine of 0.53, I get 32 degrees. I get the same answer. This, I get 32 degrees. That's great because when I did uh, inverse cosine of this, I got 32 degrees. 32 degrees, guess what this one should be? Yeah. So tangent of theta, by definition, is the opposite over the hypotenuse from this angle. I'm sorry, the opposite over the adjacent. Opposite y over x. And so the angle will be the inverse tangent of y over x. So if I give you the ratio, your calculator can give you the angle. And I sure hope the, hope the inverse tangent of 0.63 is 32 degrees. So let's find out. Inverse tangent of 0.63. And it gives me 32.2 degrees, which I can round off to 32 degrees. Awesome. So I bet this is 32 degrees. That's what I'm guessing based on, the, uh, on this. Well, I'm going to take my protractor, put it on here, line it up, measure the angle theta, and look at that. 10, 20, 30, 32 degrees. That's awesome. Now, your, your calculator has a, a complicated little algorithm in it that lets it do that. And if you take more advanced math classes where you lear learn about power series and all that, you learn where those algorithms come from. In the old days, people had to look these up in tables. You know, you, you would have people that would figure them out and then they would put them in tables. And you, have to, you have a big thick book with uh, all the sine, cosines, tangents for all the angles and so on and you'd have to look it up. But now we have calculators that do it for us. Now, I, um, we, can, we know some other things about um, right triangles, of course, and that is this relationship of the hypotenuse to the adjacent and uh, opposite sides, and that is the Pythagorean theorem, which says that r squared equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. So, using these equations right here, I can solve for the missing legs of right triangles, or I can solve for the hypotenuse, or I can solve for the angle. And that's what you're going to be doing on this uh, first, uh, well, this assignment, um, the trig function worksheet which, of course, I don't have a copy of it there. Now, the worksheet I gave you looks like this. It's got two sides on it. OK, this handwritten looking side is the trig function worksheet. And that's what's due on Friday. The other side, I just decided to save paper and put both worksheets. This is what we're going to do next time. So don't do this one yet. We'll do that next time. But do this one. And uh, what we've got here are right triangles. And you're going to use these equations right here to solve for the missing sides of triangles. Now, if you're in AM or AMA, which almost all of you are, this will be very easy for you. But I wanted to review it. And I also wanted you to see that hey, all that stuff you're learning in your math class, it actually works in the real world. I mean, if you drew a real right triangle and you made real measurements and you calculated the ratios, they really do 
agree. I mean, if you take the sine of 32 degrees, you're going to get 0.53. The cosine, 0.85. The tangent, 0.63. You really will. I mean, try it with your uh, triangles because I, I want you to understand. So let's, let's do number one together here. Here's number one of the worksheet. And I'll show you how I want you to set that problem up in your notebook. I want you to use given, find, and solve. Given. Draw the triangle. This is 10 meters, 20 degrees. This is x and y. So what are we trying to find? Well, you want to find the, the missing stuff. You want to find x and y. So let's solve. Yes, I want you to write all three words. Given, find, and solve. Well, let's find x. Um, I'm, I'm given r, and I'm given the angle, and I want x. So what involves those three things? x, r, and theta. That would be cosine. Now you could do this. You could say cosine theta is equal to x over r. Um, and then solve for x. x equals r cosine theta. Whoops, I'm off screen. Now look, this is what I this is where I usually start. Okay? I usually just say x the, the adjacent leg is equal to the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle. So you don't have to write this. You can just start there. And so x will be equal to r, which is given to be 10 meters, times the cosine of 20 degrees. So x is equal to 10 times the cosine of 20 degrees. And you'll get uh, 9.3969, you know, blah, blah, blah. Round it off. Okay, I'm going to call that uh, 9.40 meters. There's my answer for x. Now for y, I'm going to say y equals r sine theta. I'm just going to start there. And so I can say, well, this is 10 meters times the sine of 20 degrees. So if I go uh, 10 meters times the sine of 20 degrees, I get 3.42 meters. And so I have solved number one for you. So one thing you can do if, if you have your little equation list like this, you can take these uh, these two equations right here and say, you know, x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. And those are the ones we really use the most in this class. Okay. And now uh, we're running out of time, so I'm just going to kind of go over it. In this problem here, Number six, you're given y and you're given x and you need to find r and theta. So to find r, use the Pythagorean theorem. To use theta, you use inverse tangent of 4 divided by 10. Anyway, give it a shot and we'll go over these on Friday. Do on Friday. And if you're looking at this on YouTube, let me just zoom out so you can see the whole worksheet. Oh, as far out as I can go. Oh, wait. so there you go. There's the whole worksheet.